Section 1.5, Rewriting Equations and Formulas. What we're going to look at in this section is equations that have more than one variable in it. Uh, this is an equation that's called a literal equation. A uh, literal equation is an equation with two or more variables. It might have some numbers, it might have no numbers. Uh, but solving a literal equation for a certain variable means isolating that variable. Just like solving a regular equation like 4x plus 5 equals 17. I want to use that as kind of our basis here. 4x plus 5 equals 17. How would I solve that equation for x? I'm going to write out all of my work. I'm going to start by subtracting 5. And uh, that's going to leave me with 4x equals 12. Um, now to get the x by itself, that's 4 uh, times x. So in order to get rid of that, I'm going to divide by 4 and I get x equals 3, and that's my uh, solution, that's my answer. So if I had an equation that had fewer numbers and more variables, I actually would solve for x the exact same way. Look at the example that I have over here on the right, ax plus b equals c. It basically looks exactly the same as 4x plus 5 equals 17. The only difference is over here, on the left, I was able to combine my numbers and simplify them. I'm not going to be able to do that on the right. But I think about how I would solve for x, I followed the same steps. On the left equation, I subtracted 5, because that was being added to the 4x. On the right side, with that equation, I'm going to start by subtracting b. And when I do that, I keep my ax equals c minus b. I can't combine those, they're not like terms, so I can just write them as a subtraction, but they can't be combined any further. Now, on the left equation, I divided by 4, because the 4 was multiplying the x. Well, now in this right equation, a is multiplying the x, so I'm going to divide both sides by a. Now, that will leave me with x equals, and then on the right, I can't simplify any further. So I do c minus b all over a. And that is my final answer. I've rewritten that equation by solving for x. And that's really all we have to do. It may seem like that doesn't look like a final answer, but if you're rewriting an equation, then that's what it's going to look like. All right, let's have some practice. Uh, here I have a literal equation, 4x minus 7y equals 12. And I want to solve it twice. I want to first solve it for x and then solve it for y. Um, pretty much the same process either way. I'm going to start with doing it uh, for x. I'm going to rewrite the equation here. 4x minus 7y equals 12. Now I'm solving for x, meaning I want to get this x by itself. Working backwards through the order of operations, I'm going to take care of that 7y first. And that's going to leave me with uh, 4x equals 12 plus 7y. And then I'm going to divide each side by 4. And uh, I actually have a couple of options here. I can either leave it as 12 plus 7y over 4, because uh, not everything there is divisible by 4. Or I can think of it as dividing each part by 4. Uh, and that would leave me with 12 divided by 4 is 3. Uh, and then I would just have to keep the 7y over 4 uh, as well. And that would be my first, uh, uh, my equation solved for x. Uh, so either one of these, this would actually be acceptable too. Either one of those would be acceptable. Uh, for y, it's a, a very similar process, just it looks a little bit different. Uh, 4x minus 7y equals 12 is where I'm starting. And uh, I want to get this y by itself. So I'm going to start by moving that 4x. So minus 4x from each side. And that will leave me with, now don't lose track of that negative. Negative 7y equals 12 minus 4x. And then divide each side by that negative 7 because it's multiplying the y. And that will leave you with y equals 12 minus 4x over negative 7. 
and uh, here neither of those would reduce. 12 over 7, 4 over 7 don't reduce, so I would just leave it like that. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you could end up with a solution um, that looks a little bit different uh, because negatives can move around, but anything that would be correct would just be equivalent to that there. So at the end of the day, this equation, which is solved for y, these two equations, which are solved for x, and this equation, which is solved for neither one, are actually all expressing the exact same relationship. It's the same connection between x and y. They're just written differently. Uh, this form over here um, is uh, close to slope-intercept form, which is something that we'll use a lot. Uh, a lot of times when you have an equation with x and y, we will end up solving for y. So this skill will come in handy pretty soon. All right, let's see some more. Now, what we have here is an interesting problem because we're told to solve for w, and we have 3w plus 4wp equals a. Uh, and so what's interesting about this is which w do we get by itself, this one or this one? Uh, we can't combine these two things because they're not like terms, uh, and so we're, we're kind of out of luck. Uh, we can't just choose to get one by itself because then we'd have W as part of our answer. We, we can't have that. So what we have to do for this is actually something called factoring, uh, but we can think about it as uh, using the distributive property in reverse. Uh, we have two things over here that have a W in them. So that, since that's what we want to get by itself, I'm going to write just one W right here. I'm going to put that W outside of parentheses. And I want to think what did w have to be distributed to to give me this here? Well, to get 3w, I would have had to do w times 3. w times 3 is 3w. Uh, to get 4wp, I would have needed to get 4p times that w. w times 4p is 4wp. And uh, since this is added together, I'm just going to make that an addition and uh, bring down my equals a. And this is actually uh, the exact same equation as what we have here. It just looks a little bit different. Uh, you can check that but by the distributive property. We'd end up with 3w plus 4wp equals a, which is what we want to have. So now I have just one w, and I can get it by itself because this whole group, the 3 plus 4p, is multiplying that w. It's, uh, it's an implied multiplication. So if I divide each side by that whole group, dividing by 3 plus 4p, I actually will be able to get w by itself. And it's just going to result in a fairly complicated looking equation, but I get w equals a over 3 plus 4p. And that's all that you can do. Uh, but that's how you end up getting w by itself. You have to use uh, the distributive property in reverse if you have w showing up more than once like we do here. Uh, if it showed up in three different things, you'd have all of those over here and take it out of all three things uh, using the distributive property again in reverse. All right, hope this is making some sense. So the difference between an equation and a formula is that a formula is a specific relationship that has more of a real-world connection. Uh, it's, it's put into context, even if it's just area or volume of shapes, uh, it's about actual things and not just numbers and, and variables. So uh, a lot of these formulas are not necessary to memorize because they're located on uh, like your MCAS uh, reference sheet. Uh, you see there's a lot of different area formulas, lateral surface area, total surface area, volume, uh, circle formulas, and uh, connection to some special right triangles. Um, so these formulas often will be given to you. There's very few you have to memorize. You should be familiar with some of them, particularly the area and some of the basic uh, volume formulas. Um, but you have those there. You can always look them up. And in class, if you were looking for them, uh, in the back of the room uh, on the math team uh, corkboard, uh, there actually there's a folder back here with formula reference sheets, little half sheets of paper with that information on them. So uh, you could access that in class if you needed that. Uh, some of the other important formulas, um, there's temperature conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, it's 5 ninths times the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 would give you the Celsius temperature. Uh, simple interest, I equals PRT. I is the amount of interest earned. P is the principal you deposit. 
R is the interest rate in, uh, as a decimal, and T is the number of years uh, that the investment's in there. Then you have uh, distance, where uh, distance equals rate times time. You know, that's a dirt formula, sometimes how people remember that. But that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward there. And um, yeah, uh, so these are some formulas that you would probably want to be familiar with. Memorize as many as you can, uh, but don't go too crazy. All right, let's use one of them. Uh, one of the big formulas that we'd want to use would maybe be in a science class uh, where we often use the metric system and therefore uh, Celsius as opposed to Fahrenheit. But uh, here in America, we typically only use Fahrenheit on a daily basis, so uh, it's tough to really understand what these temperatures mean uh, until we put them into context of Fahrenheit. So let's say we know some key temperatures on the Celsius scale, uh, but we want to know the equivalent measurements in Fahrenheit. So what we're going to want to do rather than plugging in for C and then doing a bunch of algebra each time, is we can do algebra once and then plug in uh, a bunch of times and just get real quick answers. It, it takes a lot of algebra and turns it into just a little algebra and a little bit of arithmetic, which is really helpful. We like that. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to try to solve this equation for F. And so uh, I'm going to look at that here. We have... Uh, I'm going to write the equation again, C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. Now we may be tempted to add 32 first, but keep in mind that that's in parentheses, and so we're kind of stuck in there. Uh, we actually have to take care of that 5 ninths first. Uh, now 5 ninths is multiplying by parentheses, so I'm going to divide by 5 ninths, and of course dividing by a fraction, uh, if I write it over here, is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So that's the equivalent to multiplying by 9 fifths. Uh, so that's going to give me 9 fifths C equals F minus 32. Um, and so I have that. Now I'm just going to add 32 to each side. And uh, I get... Uh, 9 fifths C plus 32 equals F. And uh, that's what I have there as my um, formula rewritten uh, for Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to write that again up here. I have Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths C plus 32. And, um, and so now I have my formula written that way, so I'm just going to clear up this work here. And, uh, and now it's just a matter of, uh, of plugging in and, and getting these, these temperatures that I want. So I'll start with the uh, freezing point of water, which is zero degrees Celsius. And uh, then I'm going to know that the Fahrenheit version of this is nine fifths uh, times zero, which is the Celsius temperature, plus 32. Uh, pretty quickly we see that nine fifths of zero is zero, so plus 32 is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which we probably remember that that's the freezing point of water anyways. Um, normal body temperatures, 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, and so if I plug in here, I'm going to have uh, 9 fifths times 37 degrees uh, plus 32. And uh, that's just some pretty quick work on a calculator. Uh, 9 fifths uh, which is the equivalent of 1.8 uh, times 37, it gives me 66.6. Adding that to 32 gives me 98.6 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which uh, is the normal body temperature in Fahrenheit, 98.6 degrees. Uh, boiling point of water. We've got F equals 9 fifths, uh, 100 degrees Celsius. I guess I probably should put the degree symbol in there, um, plus 32. And uh, 9 fifths of 100 is 180, plus 32 gives us 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the boiling point of water uh, in Fahrenheit, which is really hot. <laughs> and uh, then just kind of randomly, let's look at negative 40 degrees Celsius, which might seem like it's coming out of nowhere. Uh, we do 9 fifths times negative uh, 40. Let's get that looking right. 
and uh, plus 32. Uh, well, 9 fifths of negative 40 degrees is actually negative 72 degrees plus 32 actually brings us back to negative 40. Uh, so I brought that up because negative 40 is actually the one temperature that's the same both Fahrenheit and Celsius. Uh, so if, if you ever were asked, um, or if you were ever told that it was negative 40 degrees outside, which would be really cold, uh, you wouldn't need to specify Celsius or Fahrenheit because they're actually identical. It's the one temperature where they're the same. Uh, so this is the benefit of the uh, rewriting the formula using literal equations because uh, we got an equation that's a lot easier to just plug into and solve uh, rather than plugging in here for C and then using a bunch of algebra to get our answers. Um, and so there you go. I uh, hope that this makes a lot of sense and uh, that now you feel comfortable with this material.